So I've now finished building the raised beds right here and Elizabeth is very excited because she's just about to start planting before too much longer. Now what we have here is basically a deer buffet. <laughs> it will become a smorgasbord for anything on four feet. So I'm going to have to do something to protect them. Well, hey everybody, I'm Bill with Live Simple, Live Free. And like I said, I'm about ready to build some covers on here to protect uh, the, the things that we grow from, basically from the deer. But I'm also going to make it in a way that it'll be very versatile. I'll be able to also cover it with uh, netting to keep bugs off if I want to, or, and this will probably be the case, cover it with plastic in the spring and the fall to make a little mini greenhouse to extend the growing season. So, um, now these are not going to be real tall, going to be maybe 30 inches. Um, I have gotten a lot of comments from all of you talking about vertical gardening, how to do it, how to save space by making things grow up instead of out on the ground and all that. And I really appreciate all of that. I already knew a lot of all that. But here's the thing, we are not going to be growing plants that, that are very tall. Because Elizabeth, as you may know, is on this autoimmune protocol. It's a special medical diet that she's on to help control her autoimmune diseases of which she has several. Now in part of that diet that means that she is not allowed to eat nightshades. Nightshades are things like tomatoes, uh, peppers, potatoes. Now um, you know tomatoes can grow fairly tall. Uh, we're not going to be growing any tomatoes. I am doing three tomato plants just for me. Uh, in pots in the, on the front porch, so they're not going to be in the garden. She also cannot eat any kind of legumes, which obviously is beans and things like that. But it also includes uh, peas and green beans, which are two things that grow vertically very well. We're not going to be having any of that stuff. In fact, everything that we are growing is not going to be tall. So by making these 30 inches or so, um, it's going to take care of our needs. Now, if you're growing tall stuff, obviously you need to do something else. You can either build them taller or build a you know different kind of protection around the beds that have that in it. But for us, this is gonna work. Now, if you follow my previous videos, when I built these beds, you know that I poured concrete down inside the walls to keep them from bowing out when the water, get, when the water gets into the, the dirt and it becomes heavy, uh, but the blocks on top right here are just sitting there they're not held in place by anything they're not going to blow around or anything like that they're a little they're heavy you know but uh, what I'm going to do is build a wood frame around it to have something to attach the the cover to that'll do two things one I have a good solid base for the cover so the covers not going to blow away and the other thing is, as I screw some of these down, or screw the wood down to some of these, it'll stabilize the blocks and keep them from moving around. Now I was going to use 2x4s all the way around, and then I realized that these are going to be hinged so they can lift, the, Elizabeth can lift the cover up out of the way, and she'll probably be sitting on the side here to work the beds. And if I had a little 2x4 here, she would be sitting on that, <laughs> little 2x4 and then onto the block it would be very uncomfortable. So just for her comfort I'm putting 2x8s on the side to completely cover that. Gives a nice solid uh, seat for her to sit on. And then I'll use 2x4s across the end. By the way I'll be using pressure treated lumber for all of this. It's not going to be coming near the dirt and it, uh, it will last a whole lot longer that way.
using decking screws that are designed for pressure treated lumber. Okay, so I got the frame all screwed down. It's all solid, it's not going anywhere. Now I'm ready to start building the cage. Now the rest of the frame is gonna be built with two by twos. Unfortunately, for some reason, Lowe's did not have any pressure treated two by twos. They did have deck balusters, but they're not long enough. So I had to get some two by fours and I'm gonna to have to rip them down on the table saw to make them two by twos. It's a pain in the neck. It's a lot of extra labor involved. I don't know why they didn't have any 2x2s, two but you do what you got to do, right? Now the cage will be up here and it'll be hinged on both ends and it'll open this way. So this is the bottom piece of the cage. There'll be a hinge here. It'll open like this. So I measured right to the center and made a mark and I'm gonna cut that right there so that I get just half of it that'll lift up this way. Now this will be the bottom frame for the cage and the entire cage is going to be built out of two by twos except for this piece I'm making it a two by four because if I put two screws in here that'll give this more strength when I lift it up also the hinges are going to go over here and I just want to give more beef more strength to where the hinges are going to go also an entire cage built out of two by twos can be a little bit rickety so I'm going to be using this wood glue this is an exterior uh, waterproof wood glue and I'm going to use that on all the joints and then pre-drill so it doesn't the screws don't split out the wood here joint, which is probably going to take the most stress, should be much stronger with the width here and the glue underneath. So now I have the, uh, the top part of the cage. I cut these two by twos the same length as these, laying it right on top so I can screw it together here. And I'll do it the same way with glue and a screw.
Now there's a little bit of twist in here, but once that glue dries, that'll be solid. So I'll do that to the joints all the way around as well. Now for this next section, I need some help. So I got my able assistant, Elizabeth. Say hi. Oh, oh hi, <laughs> able assistant Eliz Elizabeth here. <laughs> now, I've got the lower part of the uh, cage, I got the upper part of the cage, so now I gotta put the legs on. I cut these so that these will be two feet. So you got two of them over there okay. as well. So lift it up. Okay. Put one under each side. amount of room for things to grow. This will be really rickety until I get it all screwed together. Oh yeah. Oh, it's nice to be outside. I was so tired of doing office work. <laughs> I love this. Now I'm going to put the hinges on and you got to be sure to get them straight or they won't work right. So as you put the hinges on, you have to get them exactly straight or else this one will bind with the other ones and it won't work well. So I'm lining up the bottom right with the bottom of this piece of wood. Make sure they're all straight.
Now I want the third hinge right in the center, and this is center right here. So I'll take the center hole, center it on that line right there. There's the hinges. Now let's see how this thing works. Oh, that's a beautiful thing. We go now it's rock solid it doesn't move anymore excellent That's going to reinforce everything all over the place. Yep. Good. Beautiful. Okay. Huh. 
surprised it stays in there like that. Yeah, it's just braced in there pretty solidly. I'll, um, I guess I don't have to hold this, do I? No. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow, this is awesome. Are we going to need any cross bracing here? I don't know yet. Okay, because this seems... So go ahead over there and lift it up and tell me what you think. Okay. Okay, so I just... It's I'll like, have a handle. Yeah. Just... Oh, good heavens, this is fine. Yeah. Okay, put it down. So this is reinforced here, across here, and here. Yeah, and it's yep. actually quite sturdy it, it it wiggles a little but it's quite sturdy yeah I mean it's you know you've got this thing put together very well this is awesome so I'm ready to put the chicken wire on and I bought wire that's four feet wide and this frame is just uh, like two inches short of four feet so that works perfectly I'm using a staple gun with t50 staples that are half inch uh, long to put the wire on. So now that I have this all stapled all on all the way around, I'm going to use zip ties to lock it in place. And these are in, uh, indoor outdoor UV protected zip ties. And they're almost too short. Just perfect. Look at that. Yeah, these will hold nicely. Though I can see this is going to be slow and tedious. Just like that, and I'll do that all the way around. By the way, if you're going around 2 by 2s like this, these are 8 inch uh, zip ties, and it's just the perfect length. Now I'm going to put chains on here that will hold it open and keep it from falling back when you open it up. <clears throat> I'm going to go two feet for this one. Maybe one inch further for this one so they don't run into each other when the top is closed. So I've got these little eye hooks. Now let's open it. And for now I have it sitting on this ladder just to hold it open. Now I've got this chain and this locking ring 
to attach the chain to the eye hook. Put that in there, tighten it up. Now I want this to open a little bit more than it is. And since I don't have Elizabeth here right now to hold it all the way open where I want it, I'm just going to guess and I'm going to leave this chain a little bit loose and put this on here. And give it a try. All right, I want it leaning back a little more, so I got to make the chain a little longer. Okay, that's about right. Now I need to put another chain on the other side because just this one is a little rickety. But I put the other one over there and it should be nice and solid. Okay, so now I have both chains on. Got this one here and I match that one over there. So they're both holding about the same weight. This is gonna work really well. The size of the chain here was basically just guesswork on my part. And if it's not big enough, I'll just keep an eye on it. If it's not sturdy enough, then I'll just get a little bit larger chain and a little bit larger eye bolts. But for now, it's looking good. And then the last thing will be a handle right here, just to make it a little bit easier for Elizabeth to lift it. There we go. That's going to work. Now I'm kind of fighting darkness here, but I got this one side done. <clears throat> now I just have to do another one over here on the other side, which is going to be identical to the one that I just built. So I'm not going to show it on video because it's just going to be a repeat. So just take this and do it over there. I'll come back when it's done. I'll let you see the finished product. So there we go, it's all done. I really like it, I think it'll work well. We can do two different ways. We can either just lift it like this, or if we're really lazy, we can just use the app on the phone to open it. Oh, isn't that cool? <laughs> Is that cool or what? <laughs> Woo. I was gonna say, well, what do you think? But I guess you know what she thinks. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm just, I honestly probably had the coolest garden yeah. any, anybody has ever had. I think this is incredible. Okay, so the, the total cost to do this was about 150 bucks, which was, quite frankly, a little more than I expected. But, uh, so the, I mentioned before the cost for the bottom part with the block and the wood and all that was uh, $285. And with the cost of this, total cost for the for the bed and for the top was about $435. But it's going to last us for years to come. We won't have to rebuild anything when the wood rots and all that sort of thing. So. Oh yeah. Um, and I can do everything here. It's easy on my back and I can very easily open and close this myself. Yeah. And sunshine can get in, rain can get in, bees can get in. But we're not going to have any critters, no birds, no deer, no animals. So. Anyway, oh, thank you, thank you. And we can cover with plastic, turn it into a uh, greenhouse. Yeah, be a lot of options. Yeah, so, so I think you. that's going to work. Mm, you're a hero, yes. By the way, just kidding about the app. Uh, yeah, actually we are. <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks for watching. Live simple. Live free. <laughs> you be blessed. And we love you. We'll see you later. All right. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.